What's new in the world, ladies and swordsmen? My name is Cy Blade, and today we're doing something a little different. So, with the final title update to Monster Hunter Rise happening recently, that means the fifth generation of Monster Hunter, that being World and Rise, is now officially over. And so now, while we can still look back and enjoy those games, it is time to look forward to, to Generation 6 and what new and incredible monsters might come with it. And while I'm sure Capcom is doing their best to give us some really epic and unique monsters, I'm throwing in some ideas that I think might be interesting uh, that we may want to see in the future and you know capcom if you're watching this and you like my ideas we can talk i put my you know social medias in the description in these videos we can talk you know maybe a position on the concept design team and you know nice salary or i could just sell you the ideas outright let me know, you know, get a hold of me. But without further ado, let's discuss the three big ideas I have for Monster Hunter 6 and the monsters within it. Root Wyverns. Probably my favorite tier of the monsters, considering they are basically just straight-up dinosaurs. Anjanath and Devil Joe, just straight-up T-Rex, or for Devil Joe, you could make the argument of it being a Giganotosaurus, possibly. And, uh, Baroth, probably some kind of Pachycephalosaurus, or, you know, the dome head ones. And while they are all very impressive, you do have to admit that outside of the super unique ones like Uragon, Radabon, and Brachydeos, they do have a very similar and kind of basic move set. You know, the basic charges, bites, kicks, pouncing, and the occasion occasional tail swipe or slam. And yeah, Glavinus is also very unique, but again, still similar moveset, even if its tail swipes are very different from normal ones. But again, with the exception of Brachydeos, most of them are very short arms and don't really have much in the way of swiping attacks. So, I'd like to change that up with a theropod with relatively longer arms, the Spinosaurus. Also incredibly unique and iconic with its, you know, standout sail, long snout for a crocodile-like appearance, and being one of the few theropods that is a very decent swimmer, I think it has real potential here. And since Capcom has been able to make monsters that switch between bipedal and quadrupedal, such as Lunagaron, I think it would be interesting to have a brute wyvern that could do this. Start out on two legs and start swiping with its claws, and then possibly, when enraged, hunker down onto all fours to be faster and rely on bites and tail swipes. Or possibly even give it a form of Radabon or Uragon side roll and have it sail as some form of blade. Kind of like a horizontal version of Baxcalibur's Dragon Glaive attack in uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And again, since Spinosaurus has a semi-aquatic lifestyle, that could possibly factor into its element as well. We have solid entries for each element in Monster Hunter for Brute Wyverns. We have uh, Devil Joe with Dragon, Anjanath and Glavinus with Fire, 
Jade Baroth with Ice, more or less. Electric, we have... I'll get back to you on that. But we don't really have a water element, Brute Wyvern. And no, Baros mud doesn't count. That's mud, that's dirt, that's earth element, even though that's not in the games. Does Katara mud bend in Avatar? No, that's Toph's thing. So, I think it would be interesting to have a Spinosaurus type monster that can use water element, either spraying huge jets from its mouth, like... Mizutsune, or Plesioth, or other monsters that shoot much larger beams that I can't think of off the top of my head. Or, a really unique idea, once again, when it's enraged and goes on to all fours, it could possibly lay on its side, at which point we see that the little spikes protruding out of the sail on the Spino aren't just spikes, but actual little openings for water jets to shoot out. So it has almost a 180 wall of jet cutter water beams that shoot out of its sail with small gaps in between. And for a really epic attack, it could possibly do combine the two moves. Crouch down and do a horizontal roll attack while shooting the water beams from its sail, so it basically has a 360 range of water beam cutters that you really can only block or Superman dive out of the way of. Or for Insect Glaive users, they could possibly get out the way with, you know, the Insect Glaive leap into the air. Or whatever else they come up with, like if they bring wire bugs back in the future or something. And since the Spinosaurus has been easily the most scientifically indecisive dinosaur in the scientific community with trying to figure out what it exactly looked like, whether it was bipedal, quadrupedal, whether it swam, whether it didn't, it's changed so many times, honestly... That gives you just free reign to make it look however you want, really. It doesn't have to look any specific way. So, if there's one monster you could get away with saying, Oh, it's supposed to be this, but with elements of this, then it's definitely Spinosaurus just having no real one set way to look. Giving you plenty of room for creative tinkering. And since Spinosaurus has been basically confirmed to be the largest of all theropod dinosaurs, then perhaps, you know, it could be quite large and have somewhat of a rivalry with Devil Joke. Perhaps making it a, you know, three-way rivalry between them and... Uh, Basil geese, you know, Spinosaurus is semi-aquatic, Devil Joe being, you know, the power of the land, uh, Basil geese being the, you know, monster it is in the air, and uh, the Spino being the water terror monster, you know, so a clash between earth, air, and sea. I think it could be a really interesting idea. Yet another very iconic theropod or bipedal dinosaur in recent years, gaining a lot of popularity recently, the Therizinosaurus. So yeah, if it's not kind of obvious by now, I kind of want, you know, a brute wyvern that does has claws. Basically a bipedal Odogeron is what I'd like to see, honestly. So, again, like with the Spino, it would have claws and can actually do arm swiping attacks. But it also has a more than capable beat, so it could get off some pretty solid bites. And, if you are unaware, or at least in some iterations anyways, a lot of people believe the Therizinosaurus to be a rather feathery dinosaur and have 
a very feathery tail, kind of like a feather duster. And so, so it could have a similar theme to Toby Kadachi, using its feathers and feathery tail to, you know, scrape up against plant life and gain static electricity, which it can then use to charge itself up like Toby or Zenogre. If you made its tail just a bit more feathery, maybe like the back end of an emu. Or, take it another route, you could just turn it into something of a peacock tail, so when it gets enraged, perhaps it leans forward and raises its tail to do one of several things. Maybe it could possibly emit a blinding flash like Tsitsuyaku, or it could even be able to emit hypnosis or some or confusion with the patterns of its peacock tail kind of in a similar way to bring back Malfestio. So that would be nice to have elements of Malfestio without, you know, having to bring it back if that's been too much of a problem, because it hasn't returned since Generations Ultimate. And again, it would be also interesting to have a Confusion monster back. We haven't had one of those in quite a while. Again, since Generations Ultimate with Malfestio. So, again, possibilities, they are definitely out there. They just have to be explored. And I think Capcom has a real good potential to do that. They've done so many incredible things with the monsters they've already made. So, to see them do something with an already solid idea like this could be very fascinating. Rathian and Rathalos, the flagship pair of the entire series. Yes, Rathalos really more than Rathian, but they're basically the same with just different placements of the poison in the body. Super iconic, really cool monsters, and fun fights for the most part, as long as Rathalos stays out of the air, they have a lot going for them. But another monster that has a lot going for it is Astalos, an equally cool, and I honestly think cooler design than either of them, really epic pincer tail and its head crest thing like a halberd that it makes electric blades from, it's just got so much potential. And something people have noticed for a while is that Rathian and Astalos can be found in the same area very often. And it has actually been confirmed that Rathian and Astalos can actually get together and mate. So, what could be a cooler idea than another hybrid monster. Like, it hasn't been confirmed that Yon Garuga is the product of a Yon Kutku and a Rathian, but that's definitely the direction the fandom has taken it. So, it would be really cool if Capcom actually confirmed that, and that would open up the gates for new hybrid monsters, like this aforementioned Rathian Astalos hybrid I mentioned. It could be really cool, the Rathian's bigger size, because the Raths are bigger than Astalos. Perhaps the Astalos's tail and halberd head with the Rathian's chin spike, and Astalos's appearance, maybe with hints of lighter green in there. And it could be a monster with double elements, with fire and thunder. That could be really cool. We honestly need more monsters out there with multiple elements. I really think that would add some extra spice to the series, and this would be a great way to do that. And, of course, keep its poison, but much like with Rathian and Rathalos, where the poison is in different places, the tail for Rathian and the talons for Rathalos, it could be in a different place for the Astalos as well, or Astalos-Rathian hybrid, because, like I said, I'd prefer it if it kept the Astalos tail. So, perhaps, maybe, it could instead be in the Astalos... 
wing talons since Astalos is rather prone to being somewhat quadrupedal and often attacking with its wings and wing talons. So if there was a place to move the poison to on this hybrid, that would be the place. I really think some incredible things could be done with this. There is a lot of potential and Capcom just needs to follow through and realize that potential, which I entirely believe them of being capable of. And so those are my three big ideas for monsters for generation six of Monster Hunter. What did you guys think? Did I have some good ideas? Was I talking absolute craziness would you take what i said and maybe work it in a different way let me know in the comments down below and again capcom if you did think these ideas had some merit links to my social media in the description let's talk dollars and cents either way if capcom takes my ideas or not i'm sure the next generation will be really incredible and i'm definitely looking forward to it but if things like this happen in the next gen it would be a huge step forward and open up a lot of possibilities i think capcom would really be able to capitalize on but that's all i've got for now so thank you all so much for watching if you like this and want to see more go ahead and slash that subscribe button if you like this video give a quick cut to the like button Leave a comment down below, share it around with all your friends, be sure to click the notification bell so you never miss it when I upload a video, and be sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Then I'll see you in the next video. But until then, ladies and swordsmen, stay sharp.